Welcome. Can you see my screen? Very well, yes. Awesome, cool. Um, I, will, I don't want to close this, I want to minimize that. Cool, so first thing I'm going to do is, um, maybe I should, let's, let's just start from scratch. Let's start from scratch. <laughs> I'm going to pretend we're recording. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, hi everyone. My name is Jonathan. I am hosted today on uh, Daniel's uh, YouTube channel. And today we're going to be doing some cool stuff with Chakra UI. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, uh, we'll talk about what it is and how, we, how you can use it to quickly build out um, awesome UIs. Yeah. It's very exciting. And I'm Daniel. I will be asking all the questions everyone is afraid to ask. <laughs> Jonathan will be afraid to answer. Awesome. Cool. Give me the hard questions. I like hard questions. Yeah, cool. Definitely. So um, I don't know if I don't know if my like I don't know if you'll be able to even like capture my um, what do they call like the my my face in the screen. Yeah, anyway. it's there. Anyway, so okay, cool. Then I'm gonna go to terminal. Yeah. So I'm gonna go to my projects directory, which is by far the, my biggest directory in my. <laughs> On my, if I do a list, it says, "Look at all this stuff." Oh my gosh! Most of it is just is just me testing libraries and stuff, and you know. <laughs> yeah. I see so vines, I'm just yeah. gonna. Yeah, I was testing Vite as soon as it came out. Um, I just uh, wanted to try it out, and I, I love it. I can't wait to like start using it. So I'm gonna make my terminal bigger as well, so. Great. Um, people, Thank you. people can see what I'm doing. Is if that you, visible? If you, if you could zoom in, I don't know if you can zoom in a bit, but it's pretty visible, yeah. Great. Yeah, this is this is big. Like this is now like obscene. <laughs> <laughs> this is perfect. all right. Cool. So I'm gonna start by creating and calling you know npx create next app, and we're going to create a jobs application called Nchito. Exactly. Nchito, Nchito means job in um, Chinyanja job. or Chichewa, ah. depending on whether you're in from. Uh, Malawi or Zambia. I see. In Uganda, it's um, it's uh, Omulimu. <laughs> it's like there are many. I speak Omulimu. Yeah, there are many. There are many. I speak like maybe two or three Ugandan languages. So I was I was confused which one to tell you. <laughs> um, I, I remember my my, uh, my Ugandan friends used to call me was it Vanange. Vanange. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say they called you Banange? <laughs> yeah, I forgot what that means. I think it's like my children or my son or something. What does it mean? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's not a name. It's like an expression. It's kind of like the oh my God of like Luganda. Oh, are you serious? <laughs> Banange. Yeah, it's, oh, but it's all like if it's said that way, if it's like oh, Banange, like it can also be, it, it means like that. Okay. But it's also when you say Banange, it means like my people, um, Ooh, like the actual okay. like, translation is uh, nice. my people. Yeah. Okay. So hello, Banange. Yeah. Yeah. Hello, Banange. <laughs> That's not a name, though. It's it doesn't mean anything, I guess. I mean, as far as uh, from a naming point of view. Mm. Um, yeah. Cool. So yeah, it's now running the npx create next app. Um, this is you know the favorite part of every developer. I think by the time like I reach a certain age, I'm very sure like I will have spent a set, like maybe one year just looking at progress bars. For and I find it like a waste of time. Yeah, yeah I, I think this is a, oh, it's not fun to look at. I feel bad that one day it's, I'm going to have spent one year just staring at a progress bar straight. I, I give it five um, years. You would have had like at least a year's worth of progress bar stairs. Uh, that's, that's a long time. That means that you're spending, and it's actually quite close. I think most people might not realize how, how, how real it is, but um, that means one fifth of your time is yeah. looking you're looking at a progress bar yeah at least one one fifth of your working time i think most people one fifth of their working time is looking at a progress bar um <laughs> you know, know what if you use uh, node modules <laughs> that's reminded me of something someone posted this tweet uh about how they they watch ci builds because mm -hmm. employees get paid for the time they spend at work Oh, no, wait, sorry. The thing was, <laughs> I get paid by the dime for every hour I spend at work, and my boss gets paid by the dollar. So that's why I watch CI builds. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so you can make, like, more money, I guess. Uh, that's okay. interesting. All right, let's get into cool. it. Cool. 
So a programming language that we want to use here is JavaScript. Uh, we want to use YAN because I like YAN. Yeah. And guess what? You have this nice Chakra UI. It's like right there. Um, yeah, we're going to install a few modules. I like ESLint. I like linting my staged files because I care. Okay. I what, do what, what, why, why do you lint your staged files? Um, because they're the only files that need to be linted. I mean, if you, if you want, why, why should you like, if, if all the previous files have been linted before, Mm. and they're passing the lint and then you you modify only a few i think it only makes sense to like run lint for only these few that okay. you've changed as opposed to like all of them so when yeah. does that lint um when does it run on so it, staging? Yeah, so it, yeah so it runs on on commit when you commit new files okay. before it like commits them it will first run es lint only on those files that have changed that was, in oh. the in the diff nice yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. And it also fixes fixes things in case like there are like things that it can't fix. Cool. Then I like universal mode for Next because it's it's just a lot. Of, I feel like it's faster. Um, yeah. You know, and we'll do a static deployment because uh, we like that. I like putting my files in config their own config that JSON. If we were doing a project, I would go with semantic pull requests. Yeah. But no, Never I, chosen semantic like pull requests. What is that? So semantic pull requests, I can show you a very good example. Um, okay. So if you look at our Chakra UI repository, yeah. um, I'm going to also enlarge this so people maybe can see what it is that I'm doing here. So every time like you open like a pull request, um, you notice that they have this like prefix here, right? That, that yeah. shows, oh, I actually should review this. This was opened recently. So you can see like, um, you know that this pull, this pull request is of a type fix. Mm. So you know it's a fix or you know it's a feature. And you can see that through like the previous pull requests that we have here. Um, so you can see this is a documentation pull request. It's like, this is a chore, this is like a fix. So just by looking at the pull request, like I don't even need to look at like the full description. Yeah. Um, just looking at, at the, at the, uh, the type tells me a lot about like what, what I'm about to look at in the review. So I think it's good. So if you create a pull request that doesn't have, that is not semantic, that doesn't follow either, because there are a few like types, you have documentation, you have features, you have um, fixes, you have releases, you have um, CI, yeah. you have um, build. So if, if, if you just type like some weird thing, like, you know, something that doesn't make sense, um, when you when you run the job, um, when you open the pull request, I have like a um, let me show you one of these. I have like a job, like a GitHub um, action that is actually reviewing, and it shows me all oh, this pull request is not semantic. So I have a few rules that I've engaged in it, yeah. and uh, I I like having all my commits follow the same convention. So like this commit is not semantic. Um, but like I just because I changed the rule because not everyone like kind of follows this, this, um, so I'm still thinking of different ways to enforce it. So everyone follows the same convention. Mm -hmm. So let me show you an example of a pull request I've merged that follows that convention. I know I'm like deep diving here, but I think it's good. It's just, it's just, yeah, yeah. I know. think this is something that a lot of people get insight into and like Hacktoberfest is coming yeah. up. So that'll be super useful for a lot of people. Cool. I don't know what Adobe Fest is, but it sounds, I mean, I used to use Adobe a lot. Now I'm using Figma. <laughs> Hack, Hacktoberfest. Uh, oh, Hacktoberfest. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that, then, that, yeah, I think you're very right about that. So let me show you, for example, one where I did like a lot of performance, like updates. Mm. Um, I did, a, like I did, I did, I want to find like a pretty long, like thread of like commits so you can see um uh yes here for example here i have a performance pull request and i for this i changed from using props to using the utters object and okay. so if you look at the commit thread you can almost see everything that i'm doing so you can see this was a performance related commit um oh. these are tests right you can see what what this commit so it, it's really helpful especially if you're like a reviewer and you see this is, a, this is a very long thread of commits, 157 like items, um, all the way up oh, down to the bottom. Lot. Yeah. So I, I, I usually make small commits. Um, that's why I guess they're a lot. I don't like committing very large things. So you can see this is a refactor. 
is another reflector. I was refactoring the control box visually hidden. I was refactoring the button group. I added a test for the breadcrumb. So mm. you're already so getting in a lot of information. When are you queried mm. on what details to add to your semantic pull request? Do you add these details on commit? Yeah, so when I commit them, I'm, I'm going to show you how exactly I, I do it. You'll actually see it when, while we are, while we're coding today. <laughs> great, let's do it. Cool. This project should be done. Oh, great. Awesome. It's done. Nice lesson to, to learn. Um, yeah. Uh, so CD into Inchito. Let me just bring my microphone start up closer. Project. Awesome. <clears throat> so, right, we run Yarn Dev. Um, I'm also going to open this project in VS Code. So I have this command that I run called code and it will, in the directory that I run it, it will open VS Code. Yeah, I love that. That's yes. one of my favorites. Yeah, I love it too. It's really, it's really super convenient. Awesome. Awesome. And I would like to, oh, it's still opening. It's still yeah. opening. VS Code. Yeah. Atom, I remember the days I... of Atom and how heavy it used to be. I haven't tried in a while. <laughs> I used to use Atom, but I, I never really liked it, I guess, because it didn't give me a lot of like in, IntelliSense. Mm. Um, so I, I used Sublime, then I jumped to this, to VS Code. Oh, cool. cool. All right. So we have a Nux project. This is awesome. So the first thing I'm going to do here is um, sometimes I don't think, okay, yeah. So I don't think our, like the CA Chakra CLI has been updated recently because we, we, it depends on um, the, the maintainers of the project, NPX create Nuxt app. So this is actually an old version of Chakra UI Nuxt. Okay. Um, I've added a few new things. So I'm going to upgrade this. So what I'll do is I'm going to run yarn add uh, a Chakra UI next. And another item that I would like to add is the Chakra UI loader. No, but let me just run this first. Let me first install it. Yeah, project is now, it's now building. So it's a bit, it's a bit slow because uh, I'm doing a, a lot of uh, project. I'm running Zoom, I'm screen yeah. sharing. Um, yeah, but it, it will, it's gonna work. We're gonna what? make progress. What theme is that, by the way? Is that Night Owl? Which one? On the terminal? VS Code. VS Code? Oh, yeah, this is, this is Night Owl. It's Night Owl. I, I love it. Let me also enlarge. You just reminded me to enlarge this so that uh, people can see what it is that I'm doing. Great. Okay, yeah, that's pretty All right. Is, is, the, is the world happy now? Probably. I think everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's good. All right, this is this is good. I feel like this is big enough. Yeah. Um, okay, I know this is broken because I have I have updated the the project. I'm also going to add our. Um, oh, no, let me do that later. Let's first let's first start the project now, just to make sure everything works. Okay. It's always good to do that. Uh, make sure everything works. The mod option is deprecated. You can safely remove it from Next to Config. Um, so go to Next to Config. I'm not really sure. I haven't really used this, but the most is, you know, if universal. It's, if it's if it's deprecated, I guess we can remove it. But and it's not important. It's not related to this project. So it's um, cool. let's just keep it. Plus, yeah, um, we'll just keep it. Awesome. Yeah, I, think, I think I need to update my um, create Nuxt app. Also, there's a lot of new things they could add it. Yeah. Oh, I think it's an NPX tool. Are you using it? Are you running it like locally? Which one? Are you are you running the uh, Create Next app locally? Yeah, like I, I, I run it locally. I use Yarn Create Next app. So oh. I update it. I see. I see. I just use the NPX. It, I think it fetches it from NPM oh. and then like runs the binaries. Yeah. So NPX also is pretty cool. Version. I just found out that it mm. um, like NPX stands for Node Package Executor. So it doesn't install mm -hmm. them locally, it just fetches them and um, runs them. So that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, uh, it's really, I, I use it a lot. I use it for almost everything. 